Kale Beck here from StartingStrongman.com with another Strong Talk podcast. And today I'm going to be breaking down America's Strongest Man, which is taking place this weekend, November 7th and 8th in Savannah, Georgia, put on by Strongman Corporation and Iron Resurgence. So there's some articles that really break, go into and break down this by uh, Paul Mauser on StartingStrongman.com. If you like to read rather than listen to me ramble, go and check those out. I'll put a link in the description. We're going to start off with the heavyweights. This this was turning out to be the biggest America's Strongest Man in years. America's Strongest Man is generally somewhat, um, it's not attended too well. Uh, Some of the biggest American names don't go. Uh, but with so little contest this year, there's so many new good pros. There was a ton of people signed up. Then, you know, Worlds had to postpone uh, their contest due to the 2020 madness. Um, then there's a lot of people end up getting hurt, training for Worlds, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the organizers over there kind of went down the list of America's Strongest Man competitors Um as a way to scout and picked and choose who they wanted. Uh, so we lost a couple good competitors because World's Strongest Man is going to go on like a few, like three days after America's. Can't do both. Bad idea. So uh, who ended up not going? Bobby Thompson, Arnold Classic competitor, Wesley Claiborne, American uh, record holder in the Atlas Stone, uh, Gabriel Pena, who's going to be representing Mexico at World's Strongest Man, believe the first time anyone has ever done that, uh, and I believe a few others as well. Um, I'm not going to go into every detail. So, the events are a circus dumbbell for reps at 240 pounds, which is about the weight it was years and years ago, I believe, when Dimitar absolutely smoked it. A sandbag toss, a 15-foot bar, which is pretty high, at weights of 50 50, 55, and 60 pounds. A basket deadlift, which is basically like a front handle car deadlift. It's just on a hinge, and I think they're putting kegs and a bunch of other stuff in it. Um, and that's at a 725 pounds weight. An arm over arm truck pull, Husafelt carry for max distance, sandbag carry, and load at three, you know, and the Husafelt's 400 pounds. That's the weight it's kind of always been. It's a good weight for Husafelt. Um, at these shows. Sandbag carry and load 300 pounds, 330, 360, 400. So we're going to go through the competitors now and looking at those events, you got to have someone who's pretty dynamic, who's pretty athletic. Uh, I don't, this isn't the contest for static monsters, I believe. The circus dumbbell is the least static. Uh, press event there is as far as like brute strength needed um, some people that tend to be that tend to be the best on log or something aren't always the best on circus dumbbell etc there's some correlation of course but it's different a good example is Adrena Civic Saviscus so the final list of competitors is Eric Small Jose Baez Casey Garrison Nate Goldtree Marcus Crowder Michael Struza Travis Ortmeyer, Tyler Cotton, Spencer Remick, and Josh Hatfield. Great names. These are very talented, up-and-coming American pros. Missing a couple names would have been a giant contest with everyone originally signed up, but world's called. And what better way to grow American strongmen than more Americans and new Americans competing at Worlds? That's the best way to grow it, even if they don't do ASM. Sucks that the schedules ended up, but we're having two big strongman contest kind of back to back in the same general area within a week and that's a lot to be said for 2020 so going through the events let's look at each competitor so i looking at all this we have spencer remick he's underrated he's been around for a long time very well rounded think he's coming off of uh like a bicep or some sort of injury and coming through Jose Baez, you might uh, remember him as the person who defeated Larry Wheels at the LA Fit Expo. Uh, and he went on to get his pro card at that following nationals, showing that you know he's a tremendous competitor. Uh, 
good at you know he's good at a couple events like arm over arm uh you know explosive athlete good all-around competitor mike uh marcus crowder is extremely talented good all around good at tossing etc um tyler cotton as well and the the one in here which i'm sure you do know is travis ordermeyer surprised he didn't get a call up for worlds um i think they're looking for a little bit of new blood i imagine he will in the future because travis he came back to training um, you know, he, you know, if you listen to, uh, you know, Lauren Chalet's, uh, podcast he did with Travis, Travis went down a crazy road and he's, you know, risen back up and he's again, one, one of the most, uh, you know, best strongmen in America. And I think he's going to prove that this weekend. He, he already went and he competed with barely any training at America's Strongest Man, I believe two years ago. Then he had a shoulder injury. He's recovering from that. Very explosive. You'd think it would have went away. Uh, in you know, as he gets older, usually explosiveness and speed seems to go away, but it seems like Travis has plenty of that, and he still looks super explosive. So with events like sandbag toss, a sandbag carry, if we had a stone series, I'm calling it, it's 100% done for Travis. Um, you know, he definitely has the most experience. You know, stuff like arm over arm, truck pull, Husafelt carry, uh, a basket deadlift, Travis is always really good at hinged at, at hinged um deadlifts you know anything on a hinge if it was side handle he's i still think probably one of the best in the world at that circus dumbbell for reps injured shoulder always an iffy event but he is very explosive and that helps with that i think that's going to be the event that is the most important for travis in this is the circus dumbbell and we're going to go down competitor by competitor but i'm picking travis to win it seems like the most common, but I think there's a plenty of young guys here that you might not know as well. I'm not just picking him because he's the best name. Just looking at these events, seeing how he's been training, I really believe uh, he has the best shot at it. And it would make a great story if he comes back to win America's Strongest Man after everything he's been through. We have Eric Small, uh, and this is all from the breakdown by Paul Mauser on startingstrongman.com. Uh, he tore both patella tendons doing an axle cleaning press at 2013 National. I was there. I saw it. It was the first uh, strongman contest that my now wife uh, went to, I believe, with me. And she saw that as I was warming up for the event. And I think it terrified her. Um, glad to see he came back from that and then went on to win, you know, and that was in 2013, to get his pro card at Nationals. Uh, you know, Eric's event to watch out for uh you know paul expects something special from eric on the husa felt he's good at odd object events and clear as the mental toughness to endure suffering necessary for a big score and that's what husa felt comes down to we have jose baez of course uh you know he's he's really he's pretty good all around i think i think he's going to be right up there on the on the podium he placed above uh, Gabe Pena and Tyler Cotton in the arm over arm drag at the 2020 Nationals. I think that was a standing one, so that's a little different. But um, yeah, I think I expect big things from Jose Baez. I think he's uh, uh, gonna do good things in the future um, and this weekend as well. Casey Garrison, longtime pro, he's very uh, dynamic. He's a former baseball player been around for a long time good training group down there in southern california i think so, stuff like the sandbag toss he's going to do well in uh he he's a world's strongest logger winner he actually puts that event on uh and it's one to check out has really cool events he puts that one on in northern california every year i think his family comes from logging so it's it's pretty cool that he puts on world's strongest logger every year and one of my favorite contests to to see i hope it goes ahead in 2021 so there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a, a heavy 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 sandbag carry and load a max distance who felt a sandbag toss arm over arm pull these are phenomenal events for someone like casey who's very athletic he's a good athletic trainer trains a lot of athletes in actual athletic sports and i think he'll do well i'd say circus dumbbell 240 pounds is the Achilles heel and the deadlift. More of the static events um, are going to be what decides how uh, Casey places. You can look, I mean, he did a 403 pound natural stone to shoulder. So, you know, stuff like carrying sandbags, who's felt he's going to do 
phenomenal. And, uh, Nate Goldtree is a bronze medalist at 2018 Nationals and the 2019 Arnold. Goldtree has wins over guys like Jose Baez and Anthony Furman to his credit. Uh, you know, Paul expects him to do good in the basket deadlift. He's really good at uh, deadlift for reps. Marcus Crowder, he's the 2018 uh, Amateur Nationals champion. He did uh, went to powerlifting, had a few injuries. He's back, and he's looking really strong. Expect him to do good in the circus dumbbell. And getting points in the circus dumbbell is going to be especially important because there's going to be a lot of people that don't. That's just kind of how these pressing events work. So if you get a bunch of reps, a couple zero, you just gain tons of points on them. Michael Str Strauza, uh, I interviewed him on past uh, Strong Talk podcast. That's a great story. You know, he kind of went through a lot, and he's coming back, uh, looking for him to do a good show. You know, I mean, he's always walking around in the snow, just carrying things. He's had some good training on his Instagram. It's fun to watch. Uh, he also won World's Strongest Logger in the past. Good at all these odd objects. He's a stone guy. Uh, just expect him to do good on all those types of carries. Again, I think the basket, that the more static events than the more strongman events, they're all strongman events, but, events, but you know what I mean, um, is where he's going to need to have good performances. He's going to do good in the Hussefell. He's going to do good in the sandbag. And it depends on how his body uh, holds up because I know he's had some injuries. But, yeah, if you look on his, his sandbag training and everything looks great on his Instagram, and I think he'll do really well. Travis Ordemeyer, again, we already broke that down. I think he's my he's my pick. He's probably the easy pick, but I'm still picking him. We have uh, Tyler Cotton, Strongman Court Pro. He's done some Strongman Champions League, so he has a little bit more international experience and big show experience than a lot of these guys. Uh, you know, his, his brother is also a pro strongman, so he's one of those top brothers like the, the Hodges, Lawlesses, Stoltmans, etc. Uh, very good athlete. Good at circus dumbbell. Uh, he can press. You know, he can press. He's looking very athletic and you know throwing things, including you know human bodies, not real ones. It's like the salmon toss uh, over there. Uh, so definitely someone to watch out for. Spencer, you know, you know he's been a pro for a long time, and uh, it just depends on how healthy he is after some big injuries where he's coming back. But I expect big things from Spencer. And then uh, we got Josh Hatfield. Hatfield is, uh, so he just competed at 2020 Nationals and was less than two, 20, two points from the win. So it depends how healthy is he from just competing, what was it, like two weeks ago? And But big props to him for going straight to America's Strongest Man. That's awesome he does that. But, you know, so it's like he's already prepped and strong from a strong training cycle. The, the events have a lot of carryover. There was a Husafel at Nationals. There was a heavy deadlift, not a basket. Um, and there was a log. So it's like, how much training has he had on these specific implements? Um, and how beat up is he from, you know, just competing? But, you know, he's a big, strong guy. Uh, I think the arm over arm, just looking at how he's built, it looks like he's something he'd do well at. So... That's where I'm going. America's Strongest Man preview for the heavyweights. Let's break down the middleweights next. I'm Kale Beck. Thanks for watching.